OK, we've got a starting point here, which is interesting. This isn't telling me y, this is telling me do y by dx, which gives away something I might be doing later, I guess. Anyway, the point p14 lies on c, so when they give me a p, they're giving me an x and a y. We've got to find an equation for the normal to c at p. So equation of a normal is an equation of a line, so we need a point and a gradient. OK. Uh, have I got a point? Well, the normal at P goes through P. Oh, and I know the coordinates of P, so I've got a point. My gradient, uh, I need um, a gradient of the curve. Well, look, I've got a dy by dx. So notice, I don't have to differentiate. dy by dx, I've already got. So the gradient is dy by dx is going to equal something. I need an x value to go into this. Well, I've got an x and a y at P, so I've got an x. OK, the answer for my gradient, I need to think, if I want the normal, do I use the same gradient as dy by dx, or do I need to adjust to the perpendicular gradient? Do the right thing and um, use your y minus y1 recipe, and that's your equation of your normal. OK, this part B is a re-entry point, so if you couldn't do A, there's no reason for not doing B. We've got to find an equation for the curve C. Um, in the form y equals, it even tells us what it'll look like. So we need to know what y equals, starting with what dy by dx equals. So how do I get back from dy by dx to y? Well, I undo differentiation, so this is an integration question. Okay. So I integrate this. Before I can integrate that, I have to multiply out the brackets, use a grid, um, and then integrate the answer. Okay. Now the bit that you will forget is you'll forget the last bit of the integration. So you've got some terms here, the x you're going to integrate, okay? And the last term in an integration is always the same, and you must not forget it, and you're going to have to use this pair of values, x and y, to find, I'll give the game away, when you, you get a plus c, don't you? Okay, don't forget your plus c, and use this x and y value substituted into your um, answer. So this is y equals f of x, so y is 4, and then your answer, including the plus c, put 1 in for x into that, and find out what c is, and then write down y equals the whole thing, and put your value of c in to get your 5 marks. Okay? This is all in chapter 8, by the way, including this kind of plus c question. And then finally in part c, okay, this is yet another re-entry point. Okay? We, 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 it tells us to go back to the starting point. So forget everything else you've done in this question. We need to prove there is no point at C where the tangent is parallel to this line. Okay? All right. Now, parallel means same gradient as. So gradient, what methods could gradient be? It could be dy by dx. It could be the two-point method. But here I want the gradient of the line. So I arrange that as y equals mx plus c. And so my gradient of that line is a number. OK? And if the tangent's got to be parallel to that, OK, then the gradient of the tangent has got to be the same as this gradient. Parallel means same gradient. And this is what tells me the gradient of the parallel, what the gradient of the, the tangent would be. So this is a fancy way of saying um, that um, if I want this answer here, this thing, to equal the gradient of that that you've got, OK, and I try and solve it, I'm not going to be able to do it because there's no points where that works. In other words, the equation we set up, this thing here, equals the number for the gradient, has no roots. And if it has no roots, you should be able to prove that by looking at the discriminant. So that's chapter 2 work, OK, to show that there are, it's impossible to solve that equation. So check out its discriminant. You're expecting it to be negative, so you can say no real roots, therefore no points that work. Hope that helps.